Imagine somewhere in the infinite vastness of the Milky Way, a star gave birth to a planetary system billions of years ago, just like our sun. And from the icy outer regions of this foreign system, a small inconspicuous chunk breaks loose, is catapulted out by gravity and races through the darkness for billions of years. Until one day, it happens to stumble right into our solar system. This isn't science fiction, it's happening again right now, for the third time since we've been watching. 3i Atlas, the new interstellar comet, has been our guest since July 2025. NASA did this on the evening of the 19th. Of November 2025 at a press conference presented a flood of new images and data. They show that the thing is a real comet and behaves like one, looks like one, but it comes from a completely different cosmic neighborhood and brings compounds, compounds that we have never seen here in this form before. I'm Sirwan and this is Mars Chronicles. Shall we take off? On the 1st of July, 2025, the NASA-funded Atlas Telescope in Chile discovered this visitor. A tiny point of light that was moving way too fast and showed a hyperbolic trajectory. That means it's not bound to our sun, it's just passing through once and then disappearing forever into the depths of the galaxy. That's why the name 3i Atlas, the 3i stands for the third confirmed interstellar intruder. You know the first two, one, Ai Oumuamua in 2017, that strange cigar-shaped thing without a comet tail, and two, I Borisov in 2019, which behaved like a typical comet. Three, I Atlas is somewhere in between, and at the same time, completely different. Why are such interstellar comets so incredibly valuable? Because they're like time capsules from a foreign solar system. Comets in our system originate from the same cosmic material as Earth. They tell us what our system looked like 4.6 billion years ago. But 3i Atlas comes from another star system, probably from a region where there were different temperatures, different radiation and different chemistry. If we decipher its composition, we will not only learn how planets might form elsewhere, but also whether the building blocks of life are really distributed equally throughout the universe. And that's exactly what NASA is doing now in a gigantic joint program. Almost 20 missions and telescopes are observing the comet at the same time. From Earth, from Earth orbit, from Mars, and even from probes that are currently on their way to Jupiter or to the Trojans. Never before have we had so many different eyes focused on an interstellar object. What I find remarkable is that the probes and instruments were often developed for entirely different purposes. But we must focus all our efforts on this occasion. The best part about it is that there is absolutely no danger to Earth. The comet will reach its closest point to Earth on the 19th of December 2025. And even then, 3i Atlas will still be almost twice as far away as the Sun, about 270 million kilometers. No reason to panic, just a reason to be excited. We're focusing everything we have on it right now. Among others, the following probes have already set their sights on it. Hubble, James Webb, Space Telescope, Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, Neil Gerald's Swift Observatory, Spectrophotometer for the History of the Universe, Epoch of Ryanization, and Isis Explorer, Perseverance Mars Rover, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution, Europa Clipper, Lucy, Psyche, Parker Solar Probe, Polar Emitter to Unify the Corona, and Heliosphere Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory and the European Space Agency, NASA Solar and Heliospheric Observatory Mission. You can find all available images on the dedicated NASA page, which is of course linked below. The first really sharp images came from the Hubble Space Telescope. As early as July, when the comet was still 445 million kilometers away, Hubble showed this typical teardrop-shaped coma. The dust and gaseous envelope that forms when the sun's heat causes the ice to sublimate. The dust loss is happening at exactly the rate we know from normal local comets. Nothing out of the ordinary. The current size estimate for the nucleus is between about 500 meters and a maximum of 5 kilometers. That sounds huge, but it's completely normal for a comet and makes it clear why we see so much coma. What I find particularly fascinating about such objects is that they may have been racing through space frozen for hundreds of millions of years until they reach us and are brought to life by our home star, making them accessible for us to study. If they remained frozen, we wouldn't be able to analyze their composition as well. But the truly exciting part began when the James Webb Space Telescope turned its infrared eyes on it in August. The spectrometers reveal a coma that is unusually rich in carbon dioxide, significantly more CO2 than water. 
In our native comets, it's usually the exact opposite. Water dominates and carbon dioxide is just a byproduct. In the case of 3I Atlas, the nucleus appears to contain more carbon dioxide ice than water ice. A fingerprint indicating that it must have formed in a very different or chemically distinct region of its original solar system, perhaps farther out or in an area with far more carbon-based compounds. It's like tasting a dish from a completely different cuisine. Same basic recipe, same ingredients, but a completely different mix of spices. Speaking of spice mix, the ratio of nickel to iron is also completely different here than what we're used to. Three, I Atlas has much more nickel than other celestial bodies we've observed so far. That's one of the points that makes Avi Loeb take a closer look, hoping to discover extraterrestrial technology. Then came the probes that are currently traveling somewhere in the solar system and happen to be able to turn their cameras in the right direction. In September, the Psyche mission, which is actually on its way to the metal asteroid Psyche, took four pictures from a distance of 53 million kilometers. A week later, Lucy, the Trojan mission, delivered images from a hefty 390 million kilometers away. And then you can clearly see the nucleus, the coma, and a distinct tail that points exactly in the right direction, away from where the sun is shining. Classic comet behavior. But because both probes took pictures from completely different angles, the scientists can reconstruct the geometry of the nucleus in three dimensions. How big it really is, how it rotates, and exactly where the active jets are located. However, we're not quite there yet. Many images have already been published, but the actual scientific work has not yet been carried out. That will only happen in the coming years. It got especially cool at the beginning of October, when 3I Atlas came as close as 32 million kilometers to Mars. The Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Probe, orbiting Mars since 2014, aimed its ultraviolet spectrograph at it. The result is an image that looks like three glowing stripes. On the left is the hydrogen spot from 3I Atlas, in the middle is the hydrogen from interplanetary space. And on the far right is the hydrogen from the Martian atmosphere. It's like smelling three different scents in a room and immediately being able to tell where each one comes from. Mars atmosphere and volatile evolution has thus provided another piece of the puzzle regarding the chemical composition and at the same time demonstrated how perfectly our network of instruments in the solar system now works. Even the Venerable Solar and Heliospheric Observatory mission, which has been monitoring the sun together with European Space Agency for 19 years, was able to provide useful data from a distance of 357 million kilometers, twice as far away as we are from the sun. And Perseverance on the Martian surface also looked up briefly, just like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter with its high-resolution imaging science experiment instrument, which observed the comet on the 2nd of October took the photo from 31 million kilometers away. Parker Solar Probe, Europa Clipper, Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory Polarimeter to unify the Corona and Heliosphere. Almost the entire NASA orchestra is playing along right now. And all the data is made available to the public, unless NASA is currently experiencing a government shutdown. Why is this a milestone? Because we've never been able to observe an interstellar object with so many different instruments at the same time. With Oumuamua, we only had a few weeks and a few telescopes. With Borisov, it was already better. But now we literally have a whole solar system full of eyes. Optical, infrared, ultraviolet, x-ray. Each mission sees a different aspect and angle. And it's exactly this diversity that allows us to understand the composition, the activity, and the non-gravitational accelerations much more precisely. Speaking of non-gravitational accelerations, there are also slight deviations from the pure gravitational trajectory with 3I Atlas, as you would expect from outgassing jets. But so far, the measured values match exactly what is known from normal comets. Nothing that even remotely resembles the extreme anomalies of Oumuamua. The NASA scientists emphasize this very clearly. Everything we've seen so far is 100% consistent with a natural interstellar comet. But if you listen to Harvard's Avi Loeb, you may think differently. He makes it sound like little green men will land in front of Cologne Cathedral tomorrow. For this issue, I haven't started a new 3D printing project because I want to finish all the projects from the last two months first. We've already printed a new Glenn, a Neutron, a bunch of starships, a Haven 2 space station, lots of boxes, container systems, and much more using the Core 1. 
A huge thank you goes to our partner Pusa. What's next? A lot. Their own NASA page is constantly being updated with new images and raw data. Not all the terabytes have been downloaded from the Deep Space Network yet, but every week new pieces of the puzzle are added. On December 19th, 2025, 3i Atlas will reach its closest point to Earth. And because it will be on the night side then, amateur telescopes around the world will finally be able to take really sharp images. The James Webb Space Telescope will continue to observe, probably for years to come, because the comet is slow enough and the telescope is so sensitive. We will get even more detailed maps of the active regions, even more precise measurements of the non-gravitational acceleration, and hopefully also indications of more complex molecules, maybe even amino acids or other building blocks of life. And yes, somewhere out there, there's still the Avi Loeb faction that says, just wait, maybe we'll find something strange after all. But as of now, as of the 20th of November 2025, the clear message from NASA scientists is everything we see fits perfectly with a natural interstellar comet. No alien tag, no artificial excitement, no hidden signals, instead a real gift. A chunk of ice and dust from a foreign solar system that shows us how different chemistry in the universe can be. More CO2 than water, more nickel than iron, born in a coldness we've never had here. We thought we knew comets inside and out. Then one comes around the corner that humbles us again, while also showing how far we've come. That by now we have an entire solar system full of instruments that can all say hello at the same time. Before we get to the conclusion, a quick note about our shop, Planet Pioneers, where the embroidered Ad Astra collection is currently selling like hotcakes. No print that peels off, but real high quality embroidery. Use discount code 26 to save 15% on everything. They also make great Christmas gifts. So go ahead and grab one. Three, iAtlas may not be a spaceship, but it's a messenger from another world. And we welcomed it with open arms and the best instruments humanity has ever built. That alone is pretty magical. How many such visitors do you think we've missed over millions of years? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this journey to a real interstellar comet, subscribe to Mars Chronicles and give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all channel members and Patreon supporters. If you also want early access to our videos, you can find all the information about it below in the video description. My name is Sirwan and this was Mars Chronicles. Thanks for tuning in. Per Aspera Ad Astra.